Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Hello. This episode is sponsored by our friends at Free Spirit Drinks. If you're trying to cut back on alcohol, then Free Spirit Drinks have got you covered. The trio of non-alcoholic spirits are made entirely of active plant ingredients. By focusing on what's in a non-alcoholic drink rather than what's taken out, Free Spirit's plants are giving you all the pleasure and none of the hangover. Unwind at the end of the day with a nightcap made with tree saps and aromatic plants and enjoy the complex notes of wood and spices. Find out more at freespiritdrinks.com. There's even a discount code in the description of this podcast that you can use on the website. Free Spirit is not recommended for anyone pregnant or breastfeeding, children or anyone on medication. They should consult their doctor before consuming. The Livena includes natural caffeine from the Goyasa plant. And when drinking Nightcap, we recommend not operating heavy machinery directly after drinking. Okay, so welcome to this new episode. We're here with Lucy Hutchings, also known as She Grows Veg off Instagram. And she is the queen of Instagram vegetables. But it hasn't always been that way. Almost 10 years ago, she swapped jewellery for Japanese and enemies. So we want to find out a lot more. She has been on the podcast before. We talked to her about social media. So we've heard a little bit of her journey. So we're just going to get a little potted history of that. And then we're going to delve into her unique vegetable selection and even sitting here in the lounge i can see a prickly pear cactus she's growing some cool stuff ellen yeah uh, but first of all i'm going to just stop you there What's okay that? now before we started the podcast <laughs> we were talking about a gardening pun that rhymes with jewelry i couldn't think of a vegetable that started with and Jane. you actually just said from jewelry to japanese anemone it's funny and no? my pun was jewelry to jardinier yeah but i said you have to say it because i can't pronounce no jardinier. you said you didn't like it <laughs> Can I just also interject? I don't think I've ever grown a Japanese anemone. <laughs> but hey, yeah, we'll roll with that. Uh, well, Lucy, give me a vegetable that starts with J, and then we'll all be happy. I can't. I can't uh, think of it. Oh my god! Why? This is like why can we not think of one? Jelly melon. <laughs> oh, is there a Josta berry? Yeah. Is yeah, I see. thought you were gonna say just it. I was like, you can't <laughs> grow those anyway. Everyone's, point, everyone's pointing each other with jubilation, like we're on a game show. I know <laughs> this is gonna be so game. much fun, oh. anyway. Lucy, thanks so much for having us. Thank, Thank you for you. having me on. It's suffice to say, we all have a natural rapport already. <laughs> 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 very Suffolk. <laughs> well, when in Rome. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot I was in Suffolk. I'm the odd one out. Is it Suffolk or it's near the border? Isn't yeah, it? like a mile into yeah? it, but uh-huh. it's a very important mile. Postally, I'm in Essex, <laughs> but okay. geographically, I'm in Suffolk. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, well, anyway, yes, you have gone from jewellery to Japanese and enemy, just a berry, <laughs> jelly melon, jardinier, whatever. <laughs> like, tell us about it. <laughs> I have, yes. Yeah. So I guess uh, I probably have a, a different history into... Um, horticulture than most people do but that's fine makes more interesting so Mm. yeah I did used to have my own jewelry label so I had uh my own eponymous label for like about a decade I think and I don't think you can probably get two more different industries than fashion and horticulture that's probably what drew me from one to the other I reckon Mm. because I did um I had this you know I had a great time and I did all sorts of things that I think people probably thought were really really exciting and with celebrities and all sorts of things like that but when I reached a point in the business where I had to either regrow it and get investors and it would have become a whole different animal Mm -hmm. or um, I wasn't going to be able to afford to keep making the collections anymore just because it's really really um, 
cash flow is a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bet. Um, so it kind of gave me a moment to pause and I was like, do you know what? <laughs> I'm really not enjoying myself and I haven't uh, been for a really long time. Right. So I've been so focused on doing something I thought was my yeah. dream <laughs> and, you know, it, it sounded exciting, so it kind of carries it carries you along in that way. But um, yeah, I just realised I really wasn't enjoying it. It hadn't been for quite some time, so I kind of took the drastic decision to um, leave and wow. shut up shop and, yeah. and wow. move away from the fashion industry. And I haven't looked back. I can honestly say. So there was a gap <laughs> between fashion and whatever it is I do now. I was going to say, like, were you already into gardening and growing your own food then or did that come later? Like, how did that transition happen? Well, I did grow some edible plants kind of through my whole adult life, but I didn't really register it, I guess. So I think if you'd asked me at the time, I wouldn't have said, like, oh, this is my hobby, I like Mm. doing this, but I just always had a few. So if I bought plants, they were going to be edible mm-hmm. i didn't really have any interest in it so there was something there yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah definitely and i just really found it really inspiring if there was a way that you could eat the plant didn't really care how you ate it mm-hmm. i just found that really interesting and i had no idea what i was doing and i had a lot of failures <laughs> <laughs> like, we all do that <laughs> yeah, exactly right. but i you know it was just something that made me really really happy so then um i guess another eight years or so down the line i've done children and uh, as you've seen on the walls, had a brief uh, little foray into the world of <laughs> art. It's very cool. Yeah. I've got to just say, it's super sparkly. <laughs> and actually, much. it does remind me of, like, jewellery too. Well, like, it is. It's basically all the components that I used to use. But yeah. I very quickly ruled that out as an option. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it was fun while it lasted. But then, yeah, I was going through this kind of quite stressful time, as we all do every so often through life. It throws us a curveball. And I needed something that was going to be a complete distraction and something Mm. that was really removed from my past life and previous life and and something that was kind of new and going to be all mine. And so it was to growing food that I turned. And I started, it was in winter, so it wasn't a lot I could do at the time. So I just started researching uh, heirlooms and forgotten edibles and... But, like, what sparked that? Like, like, do you know, (laughs) were you just, like, sitting on the sofa one day and just go... Oh, I'm just going to now grow my own food. Like, I don't what? know. I don't, I have no idea mm. what the moment was where I just, it, it, it kind of clicked, but it, it something, yeah. something, something clicked. Clicked. I don't think you always know where things come from because Ellen, actually, when people ask us, why did we decide to start the podcast? Yeah. Things like that. We can't answer that question. No, either. not it really. Just, things no. just evolve, don't they? Yes. Yeah. I think sometimes you have like a eureka moment and sometimes it's just, it's yeah. just so it's probably just so right and so natural that it just happens and you don't really registering it happening Mm -hmm. and that's I guess what probably happened here so I probably because I had got a little veg garden but again yeah still didn't really know what I was doing Mm -hmm. I was just kind of sticking plants in and not giving them much attention probably so it's probably when I was looking for this distraction and I started thinking okay right what am I going to plant this year and then that's when the research started but Mm -hmm. it quickly escalated into something different and then that's when I set up the Instagram account as well and started interacting with people online what was your first picture (laughs) do you remember remember. you know I planted a load of spices because again it was in winter so there wasn't a lot I could do um, so I think I'd planted like ginger and turmeric uh-huh. and stuff in the house and some lemongrass and things. So yeah, I think that's that was... That's cool. And that's exactly what we want to talk to you about today, the unusual veg yeah. that you grow because right. it you're just right pushing the, the boundaries <laughs> and that is just fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And like, what's, yeah you, you, I mean, we've just had a very little look around your garden already, which is so cool because there's some awesome stuff growing in there. <laughs> you know, what other kind of plants that you love to grow, like the real standout ones for you that are just something a bit different, you know, like heirlooms? or just something that people wouldn't even expect to be able to grow yeah, in the yeah. UK. So I've had real success this year with bitter melons, okay. Okay. which I was quite surprised about that they've done so well yeah. because yeah. they probably hail from a, like a warmer yeah. climate and we've not had the best season. So I wasn't really expecting them to do really well, but they've done so well and I've had loads. <laughs> and it's like... A, I think some some people are aware of them. They're kind mm-hmm. of a strange looking gourd that yeah. quite, kind of look like. Have you cooked with it yet? Or? I haven't cooked them yet. They're I've insane, them. I've really but they're really, really good it. for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've tried yeah. them raw, and they're like a superfood. And I know we've got loads like yeah. everything's everything. Everything's superfood. Everything's a superfood. <laughs> but right? these are like actually a superfood. Yeah, They've got like yeah. medicinal properties, and the people people like. Um, 
who have a history of eating them, like from the East and stuff, who mm. they go nuts over the fact that they that I'm growing them here. And the people have a real passion for this food. Mm. It's supposed yeah. to connect, uh, like help control blood sugar levels and, right. and purify blood and that kind of thing. Plants so, are the best. <laughs> so, they're, so they're really, really cool. And I've done well with them. Also, I've been growing like um, something called a... Schwarzenbeeren. So if anyone's German or speaks German, I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced... probably pronounced Glockenspiel. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Basically, so I'm told, it mm-hmm. means blackberry in right. German. But okay. it looks like a deadly nightshade. It, 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 well, it, it looks It scary. is a nightshade. It looks it can, terrifying. Aren't you does. scared they muddled the seeds up? Oh, well, let's hope <laughs> not. I'm still Sorry, alive. Sorry, don't really put that in your head. I'm going to work on the basis that they're not, <laughs> since I'm still living. But <laughs> to see that plant growing is kind of like, whoa, you really yeah. take a second glance Yeah, at it. it really yeah. looks like a nightshade. And it has it, the, the berries that you eat. So you eat them like a sweet berry. So unlike other edible nightshades like tomatoes and... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, aubergines and things like that. They're mm. more in the sweet camp. Um, and you've got these little clusters of blackberries with all the nodes down the branch. Mm-hmm. So they're really, really productive. And it does look just like a deadly nightshade. Yeah. But if I hadn't known where I'd plant it, I probably wouldn't risk it. But I, I knew, yeah, I knew yeah. where it was. So it was all good. <laughs> and it's been super productive. And it, apparently it sells seeds everywhere. So, um, yeah, uh, that's... But I'm what if it that. sells seeds everywhere and deadly nightshade? Pops yeah, up and then you get what, muddled see, the up. Key There's is a conundrum. To keep the deadly nightshade <laughs> out of your plants, and then you know that the uh, nightshade you've got is is all right. You are mm, brave. Got to be I vigilant. Know. Yeah. You are brave. <laughs> when you were saying about bitter melon, I mean, I don't know what it's been like here in Norwich, where I'm based. It has basically been warm and wet since uh, June. We've had a couple of days sunshine, that's it. And I've found that that humidity has really, really helped with things like mm. bitter melon. Regardless of having regardless sun Regardless of the sun, yeah. but the heat and the humidity has really, really okay. helped. I've mm-hmm. definitely found that on the allotment. Yeah, interesting. interesting. There's right. lots of other things that haven't done very well because they needed the sun. Yeah. But actually, some of those plants that you wouldn't expect to be able to grow here, it has been, I mean, it's not been hot, but it's been warm and wet. And I think mm. that that's probably really helped. Yeah, I think it's that... It's, that that slight kick up in temperature that's um, impacted some of my other crops. And yeah. I was expecting bitter melon to require a bit more of that. Mm. Um, just... I think we probably assume that a lot with tropical plants, but there's probably a lot that we can grow here yeah. that we don't uh, realise. But well, we assume I'm we trying. can't, so we don't try. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, you're brilliant is, with it. So I've, because uh, I'm obviously kind of aiming towards being more self-sufficient, that's a real... Mm. Um, interest that i have but part of that is about the carbon footprint that that food has anything you buy from Mm. a shop even if it's grown locally it's still got to be processed and shipped about and packaged and things so anything that you can grow Mm. is something you're not buying from the shop yeah so that's then reducing your food food miles and therefore the carbon footprint so we're so used to being able to walk into shops and buying anything that we want Mm. so it's nothing to walk into a supermarket any time of year and pick up a tropical fruit yeah yeah Mm. but obviously we can't grow those here in theory so i thought and i got really interested in what if i can mm. <laughs> so i've been growing, trying to grow stuff from seed so i have got a massive papaya in the greenhouse that's which is doing awesome. really well that is so <laughs> but awesome but even as a foliage plant as a foliage house plant that works it's absolutely even without beautiful. the flowers or fruit yeah. it is and apparently it is yeah. realistic to get them to fruit so it i only grew it from seed this year and it's pretty much as tall as me now mm-hmm. so it's grown really mm-hmm. really fast and Theoretically, they might fruit in the second That's year. Cool. Right. So I'm quite interested to see. Yeah. It's going to be a long experiment. But it's beautiful. Yeah, right? it is really it's beautiful. There's a hardy one as well, isn't there? What's the, is there? What's the Latin? Asemia. Oh, uh, you're, you're yeah, Latin. That one I can't up. do that. They sell- <laughs> I don't know, I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. I know, um, sorry, I'm on a tangent here, but I, I don't know if you know Balder Garden. No, I don't need that It's one. a German mail-order catalogue, plant and seed catalogue. It is awesome. Oh, yeah. If you can ever get a hard copy, it is luminous colours on the oh, cover. Oh, wow. And they do all cool stuff, like like the uh, Swatchenbearer Swat- that you said. Oh, yeah. And uh, all sorts of, like, they've also got, like, Skysandra. They were doing goji berry. And they market them in really cool ways. And there's a lot of unusual fruit and veg there. Oh, have a look on the right website, Balder Garten. You're going to be on that, aren't you? So <laughs> I'm all over that. And that's where I'd seen the hardy pawpaw. 
for. Oh, wow, yeah. Because they seem to be obsessed with exotic things that we can grow in our climate. And, of course, German climate is very similar. Yeah. So Absolutely. It's well, I think it's, yeah, I think it's it an interesting yeah. thing for people to, to look at just because, mm. yeah, if we can grow, just it, even even some of it, it's all just less stuff that we're flying around in yeah. planes. It always, like, blows my mind. So mm. you pick up some fruit or whatever in the supermarket and it says it's from Brazil or whatever. Mm. And you kind of don't really think about it. Well, I, I guess we do I now because that's what we do. But, but yeah. most people wouldn't really think about that and you get it home and then you put the fruit in the fridge and it lasts like a week or more and you just think you've just got something that was grown packed mm. shipped uh then you bought it and it's in a fridge for a week well how do you think it's yeah. gonna last that long yeah. do you know what i, know. I mean like <laughs> if you pick your strawberries in the garden you need to eat them within a few days right yeah, yeah. but if you get your strawberries from wherever you know like does does it not click <laughs> We are oh, no, really like, spoiled, and like you don't think yeah. about it. And I think like a real focus for me and my partner is like eat your environment and have a better connection mm. with your environment. And what's seasonal? Because if we're m- more in touch mm. with what is in our immediate environment, yeah. what's in season, whether that's out in the wild, you're foraging, or mm-hmm. whether you're growing it in the garden, or whether you're growing stuff that you know that you can preserve and save, yeah. that's really going to make a massive impact on what you're buying. Yeah. I love the seasonal approach. Yeah, that's so make important, you more isn't it? Adventurous as well, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, like, you know, obviously climate change is awful, but as the climate does heat up, we might be growing new and different things here, you know. Exactly, we, we don't know what before. we're going to be able to grow. And so I think it's important to experiment. And also yeah. you don't know what you're going to like. And you yeah. want to keep it diverse. If you are really trying to kind of increase the amount that you can provide for yourself, mm. you still want it to be interesting and you want it. Yeah. You want to be inspired by what you're growing. So I'd always recommend chucking in a few unusual yeah, items. Yeah. Just yeah. to see, see if, one, if they grow well for you and second of all, if you like them. I have to yeah. just ask you about one thing I saw. I saw that you were growing avocado. Are you going to be the first person I've ever known to grow <laughs> avocado yeah, uh, in the UK <laughs> for give it to it actual <laughs> fruit? I'm like, going to give it a damn go go <laughs> if you are i'm gonna do something epic for you <laughs> oh, yeah. like, watch out you, for that i'm gonna give you a gift or something and that just sounded rubbish oh. but yeah because that would be amazing yeah mm-hmm. I'll, I'll invite you around for an avocado Thank party you. for the first avocado That's it. let's do that yeah <laughs> we'll have half each oh, <laughs> you are so so on. <laughs> I love that you're you're naturally inquisitive, so that's why you're searching down these unusual varieties. You've got an adventurous palette as well, which I think helps too. I do. <laughs> yeah, and not, not even talking about the unusual veg that you grow, but you're obviously quite into foraging as well. So you've got quite a few good finds in the local area here, because often I see in your stories you're on the beach getting yeah, sea kale really cool. or yeah. samphire. Yeah. Tell us a tiny bit about the foraging that you've done and what yeah. is the most unusual thing you've found? It's all kind of part of that being more in touch with yeah. your environment things i just think you know it's really if you look at the history of humans it's really not that long ago that we were basically hunter gatherers yeah. and we had to be entirely in touch with our environment and we were mm. completely dependent on it and we've moved so far away from that yeah and you do have to be responsible when you're foraging because you know it's it's not a supermarket you just take what you need take a little bit mm. and things but i think if we are more connected with what's going on around us then yeah there's some really amazing things that nature offers up and uh, you don't want to miss that opportunity Mm. so i've been trying to learn more mushrooms but there are so many there are so many but i've got like a staple now small collection of things that i know are safe and one of my favorites is a parasol mushroom which is really relatively safe because they're about a foot tall so you know if it's that thing do you want roadsides Really? I'm really? really bad on the school run. But I'll like tool. veer off off the road, and g- girls are like, "Have you seen a mushroom?" <laughs> 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 yes, darling, I have. <laughs> like, are any of my friends around? No, you're safe. You're fine. Oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> but what a great way to educate kids. You yeah. can eat from the side of the road, exactly. the hedge row, etc. They et love it. They absolutely wow. love it. So they've got really into it now. So they'll go running off and go come back come back and go, mummy boy, you found some jelly ears and more oh, girls. So, nice. them. so I like that they're getting more connected yeah. with their That's environment cool. as well. Where are you getting the knowledge on the mushrooms? Like online in books or you've got a mycologist um 
you call it? Mentor? <laughs> <laughs> I've done a, key, a couple of courses. Ah, okay. And I, I do really that recommend would make me it. so nervous to be yeah. yeah. Well, I think, yeah. I think you yeah. don't, there's not really margin for error on mushrooms yeah. because they're either really, really good or really, really bad. So, yeah, you don't want to kind of chance it with a mushroom. And there are mm-hmm. loads of books, but I find it is really confusing and inevitably what you pick up does not necessarily look like the picture whereas if you're going out with someone Mm. and they're showing you they give you so much more advice like a broader amount of advice and I think seeing it and have someone talk you through it is really good so if anyone is interested in doing mushrooms Mm. I would really recommend um yeah doing doing a course Mm -hmm. but then there's lots of really safe forages like blackberries for example yeah. I don't know why you'd yeah, even yeah. plant a blackberry because yeah. we have the most amazing crop they are everywhere, crop. They they? Are everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know it's a really really safe mm-hmm. crop that anyone can go and, and it's the first pick. thing you pick when you're a kid exactly well. yeah. and you know the first thing you right. learn about it really isn't yeah. it about foraging yeah. I remember picking them when I was a kid and then putting them into little punnets and then taking them to the WI market to sell oh, <laughs> oh bless you little heart oh, entrepreneur aren't, aren't you wholesome <laughs> He will lead you to believe that. <laughs> but I love it. But um, but sorry, back to mushrooms for a quick minute. Like, there's no real easy way to tell if one is poisonous or not, is there? Like, no. obviously, we're not giving any advice on the podcast today, but it's just... No. I, I, no, it just, just comes down mystery, to knowing. Yeah. You just, just have to know. But you then, want to lay off the magic mushrooms. But then how did someone find out in the first place? Did they have to die I, I, for the cause? I have a feeling it was trial and error. Yeah. Just like you wouldn't want to be you, that tester, would you? You no. would. But I'm assuming there's a, there's a certain amount of kind of like inherited knowledge there. Like mm. we have been hunter gatherers. Yeah, so that's why we started out. So someone must have been passing that knowledge on. And although yeah. we've moved away from that, there are some people that have stayed really connected with with it and so that knowledge must have been passed on and I, you know yeah. you do things like go and go to these courses and stuff you mm-hmm. you learn and mm. you learn from someone and then you inevitably you know i'm teaching my kids and stuff so the knowledge does move move, move through on, the yeah. generations i think i think also mm. now uh, there's science scientific research you could probably take a mushroom take it to the lab and tell whether it is like yeah. poisonous or not know, do you know yeah. what i mean i don't know mm. anyway but anyway back to plants. <laughs> before <laughs> we get off foraging i just want to um I remember going a few years ago to a pub in St Albans and it was called the Forager's Arms and the guys that ran it, they took me out on a little forage before we then bank- went back for lunch and the whole menu was stuff that was foraged in the local area. Oh, amazing. It's really cool. Look it up if you get the chance. It oh, was I will, definitely. such a cool experience to learn and just to then eat wild food as well, but obviously prepared mm. in quite an inventive way as yeah, well. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Farmers Market. I think it was risotto, often. which doesn't sound that inventive now, so it. <laughs> <laughs> Really yeah, nice, though. especially because the mushrooms, all the different ones in it. Because my problem with risotto is every mouthful's the same. You know, there is that. Yeah. I love risotto. <laughs> I love risotto. I guess you have to. It's a nice mushroom. What do you mean? Cause, oh my god! Let's not go there again, Lucy. Let's move on. It's Can like I... I'm enjoying your arguments. Go on, have another one. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you think we're becoming known for like podcast arguing? I don't know, but you should because it's <laughs> yeah. like you're cornering the market, and it's excellent. <laughs> New sauce pop. <laughs> right, Ellen, next question. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> I'll proceed. Is there a plant that you found particularly diff- difficult to grow? <laughs> so cute. It's like asking or a question. Do you know what? I almost <laughs> swore at you then. Like, on the podcast, so our, cute. our editor would really tell me off if I swore, and I almost did. It was just so sweet. We can't be friends today, Michael, I'm over you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing a certain amount of tension. I feel like I should start counselling you guys. <laughs> but instead, I'll tell you about tuba roses. Oh, go because on. Because that's one thing that I've, yeah, I've, I've tried to grow for years now. Um, so, I, and it's like, it's a flower, but I don't mm. think most people realise it is. And the flower part is edible and it's traditionally used in Indonesian cooking as like a flavouring. And it's one of the most highly scented flowers in the world. I think yeah, it's yeah. really prized. It's by used in Chanel yeah. number no. five, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Am- and it is an amazing yeah. smell. I absolutely love it. So I've been trying to grow it now for three years and Do I have lots of lovely leafy green flowers. Uh, can I get a flower? But this year, for the first time, I have one flower spot. Oh, yeah. It's so weird yeah. you say that. I feel so guilty because like I've been selling it when I was at Thompson Morgan for many many years and we sold so many I wonder how many flowered I'm sorry, I know, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I have to say because like, I, 
I've tried it in loads of different positions. Yeah. I had to put it in like a special self-watering pot in the greenhouse for it to put up one mm-hmm. flower spike eventually. But I, I'm not. I will never be beaten. I'll just mm-hmm. keep going. But isn't it incredible? Oh, it oh is amazing. Gosh. I have to. Say, it is amazing. The scent and the is amazing. It's kind of layered. I, actually, I remember when we um when we grew it at TNM once. We actually sent a flower to a wine expert once oh, really? and got him to smell the layers. And I can't remember what it, it's something like green tea with layers of vanilla and oh, it, he explained it in a real wine type way. Oh, wow. It was really so, interesting. So highly pretentious. Then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know there's a pink one as well. I never I like the white, I'm quite mm, purist about yeah. these things. Um, yeah, and the but single it has flower, the single flower has not got the same allure, has it? I haven't even seen that yeah. one. Like, I'm, I'm just lucky with one. It just looks a I've mess. I've got one, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. You've got one. I've got oh, one. That's good. I'm so tick, I've done it now. That's but cool. also the other thing, I really can't grow, and this might surprise people because there have actually been quite a lot of people who managed to grow this around the country. I cannot grow a loofah. It's just not oh, happening for me. I've okay. tried. I keep Who's trying. one out there then? I see lots of people who grow loofahs. I remember seeing My Little Allotment had failed this yeah. year. There's it? loads of people who grow loofahs on it. Oh, I've never seen it. Yeah, yeah there's quite a lot. Um, <laughs> loofahs don't love I me. have, and only very small. They never mm. got very big. And this year, I had lovely, l- like, lovely lush growth, and then it just they just all died. Mm-hmm. And then next to other <laughs> vines, so I don't know why, like, everything else is fine, but no, they I've just died. I've got the same thing. Wow. got a lovely green vine. It's not flowered at yeah. all or anything. But anyway, I'll persevere. Yeah. But does it, well, like, when, when you had a small one, Ellen, could you dry it at that size it wasn't so you need developed to enough no, oh, okay. no 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 it's one of those like I remember looking over sea catalyst when I was a kid it's one of those things I was like would drool over and I want to grow it yeah yeah no, there's a lot of yeah. if you check out what is it called Luffa challenge or something really yeah. oh, um, yeah. then there's loads of people doing it yeah um, chicks and veg is that, chicks and veg I think that's her name she know. was on Gardener's World a couple of months ago talking about how to grow <clears> oh I'll check it out but that was on one of my like saliv- salivating lists but also something that I think you've grown that I used to dream of growing when I was a kid is a walking stick cabbage you've yes, that, you? yeah, I yeah. have what's that well I thought it was still cabbage. pale but either yeah, way I think it's probably the same yeah. thing I think um I did plant them this year, but they yeah. got like devastated by. Um, but you can dry it to make a walking it's stick. It's amazing, yeah. I have to say. So really it gets, cool. and I I pulled mine early, and it was like two and a half times my height. Oh my god! Yeah. But you could have walked so, with that, could you? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so traditionally, they were grown in Jersey. So their their name is Jersey Walking Stick Kale. Right. Um, uh, or one of their many names. <laughs> um, and so they'd grow them for two years. It's like a, a perennial, I think it's perennial. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so they'd grow them for two years, taking off all the leaves, and it grows this really, really thick, really strong, straight stick. Yeah. Like trunk kind of thing. And then they'd pull it and dry it and varnish it, and then that would That's be cool. the walking sticks. That's amazing. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I'll tell you the other thing I used to salivate over, vegetable squash spaghetti. What's it called? Vegetable spaghetti. Uh, You've yes, grown that, haven't squash. you? Did you give me one once? Vegetables, you know the yes, squash with the spaghetti squash. inside. No, I gave you the um, mashed potato squash, no? <gasps> mashed That's potato and baked potato. That's a new one f- since I was a kid. Yeah. yeah, they're quite new. So no, mm. I haven't grown spaghetti squash before. Oh, it's though. awesome. You know it though, right? Yeah, but yeah. I've never grown it. Have you grown it? it? Yeah. I've, I've tried to grow it, yeah. but not had that one work uh-huh. yet. But, I don't know um, so I had shocks. someone gave me one once. I cooked it. Have you had a shark spin melon? Because they basically do the same thing. Do they? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so they're really, really cool. And they're so productive. Oh, my God. I had so many. I didn't even know. Oh, that's a melon. Really? Actually, a melon. It's... Uh, I think it's... Is it a melon or a squash? Uh-huh. I don't know which side I, I it falls on. I brought you a melon today, by the way, in my bag of vegetables. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I'll take it to Leeds. <laughs> 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 oh, that's really cool. Yeah, and I mean, that's really cool, really but that's well. also cool. They're growing well. <laughs> Where was anyway. I? <laughs> Shark's oh, melon. Anyway, they get so pre- so if cool. you are vegetarian and obviously don't want to eat shark's fins, which mm-hmm. no one should eat anyway, mm-hmm. uh, that is what is the veg- vegetable replacement in a shark's fin right. soup oh, really? traditionally. Oh. But inside, it's the same kind of thing. So as you, if you kind of it must cook be it, then, mustn't it? I think so. Mm-hmm. Like you know, some of them you're never mm. quite sure whether it falls. Yeah, shark's no, no, it could no. even yeah. just to chuck mm-hmm. you a curveball completely be in like the cucumber camp yeah but, oh my god yeah so yeah. Anyway, oh, I'm not to... actually sure which side that one falls oh, down on but it, you basically grow it and treat it like a squash and it lasts for ages I've still Amazing. got them from... that's cool oh we have to take you to this vegetable trials yeah. we talked about you oh, yeah. love it. Love it. It turnips that taste of melon as oh, well oh wow and really it's, it's silky the flesh is silky really? it's amazing yeah really right, where are we young Ellen <laughs> <laughs> 
read it. So, just so you know, listeners, we always have a list of questions, but I can't read my own. And ty- this is I can't read my own typing. But he's, he's, uh, he's... Hello, my name's August from August Garden on Instagram, where I share all my tips and colourful inspiration on growing your own food and flowers. I am also the founder of the Seed Explorers, which is a box of growing magic for kids. It's full of seeds, full of activities and fun things to do as a family to try and inspire the next generation to fall in love with growing their own food just like I have. I'm also the garden tutor at the Raymond Blanc Gardening School and I'm also a kitchen gardener at the two Michelin star hotel and restaurant in Oxfordshire, Belmond, Le Manoir. So we are in that wonderful festive month of December and I'm not sure about you but my garden's looking pretty barren right now. I've got a few Brussels sprouts about the size of a peanut or I think if I'm lucky there may be a couple the size of a walnut but not very many and we've also got some kale but it's got lots of holes in it because the slugs have had a pre-festive feast on my kale. So what I'm trying to think of is how can I bring some homegrown magic to my Christmas dinner, to my canapes for New Year, and just bring that little added homegrown touch to the plate. And the way I do that and the way I love is to use micros. So anybody that doesn't know what micros are, they're those baby, baby leaves. And a lot of us grew cress and mustard as a kid and it's that kind of process and that kind of um, leaf that we're looking for. So once that seed grows and the first two true leaves emerge, you can cut that and use it as a micro. Now the benefits of micros are they are packed full of flavour. So they add a real different dimension to your dinner plate. Also you can get some really lovely colourful leaves like purple red cabbage, uh, amaranths, purple kales, and they will give you that lovely different colour that is nice to see that sort of interest. Also, they are packed full of nutrients, so they've got wonderful health benefits. What I generally do is have a little look at any seeds that I've sown throughout the month. Google it, is this edible? So, for example, kales turnips, lots of your brassicas, cabbages can all be sown as a micro. So if your seeds are going out of date, give them a sprinkle and within a couple of weeks you'll have some fabulous micros for Christmas. Another one of my favourites, peas. Peas are just so delicious and fantastic to grow on your windowsills. So how I sow my micros is by looking at my rubbish and thinking what can I use as a container. To me raspberry and grape punnets are fantastic because they've already got the holes in the bottom I'll fill those up with seed sowing compost, water it first. That's my top tip because if you water it after you've sown your seeds, your seeds go floating off into the sunset and then you wonder where they've all gone. So water it first and then sprinkle your seeds onto the surface. So your smaller seeds like kale and turnips, pop those on the surface. They don't need to be covered. When you go up a notch to maybe your radish and beetroot, I'd give that a nice light sprinkling of compost on the top. They like to be tucked into bed because they're that much bigger. Peas, I'd go a couple of centimetres of compost on the top of your peas because they're quite a big, robust seed. So they like to be completely surrounded by a nice blanket of compost. And then another top tip that I will give you is I pop my micros into a plastic bag. A compostable plastic bag is absolutely brilliant. And then I put that onto the radiator because that will give you germination a little bit quicker. As soon as you see your seeds germinate, take them out of that plastic bag and pop them onto the window to get that light going to those seeds to produce some fabulous micros for you. And within about 10 days, radishes maybe even less, seven days, you will have some gorgeous 
nutrient-rich micros to add a whole nother level to your dinner plates. So that is my top tip for December. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Plant Based Podcast for having me again. And I hope you all have great fun growing micros throughout December. And this is something you can take on through the months and throughout the whole year, really. If you don't have much space in the garden, just grow them on the windowsill. It's so much fun and great to get the kids involved. So I hope you all have the most magical Christmas. And if you do grow any micros, please do share them with me on Instagram and send me some pictures because there's nothing I love more than seeing some magical dishes with homegrown fabulousness. So have a great Christmas, everyone, and I'll speak to you soon. I like that question, but there's also another one I want to ask first. Okay. Where do you stand when it comes to, I'm going to say it with an H for purposes of the pun. Where do you stand when it comes to heirloom versus hybrid? Heirloom. (laughs) (laughs) It looks Um, better on paper. Yeah, it does. Yeah, because... I'm 100%. I'm I'm, I'm an heirloom Mm -hmm. all the way. I I am, personally. Um, The only hybrids that I grow are a, a few ornamental sunflowers because mm-hmm. of the, the colour varieties mm. that you can get. But other than that, I basically go 100% um, heirloom or heritage. Why? People prefer yeah, that. For Why? all reasons. Because um, I I think, we're, going right back to the start of this conversation, because mm. I, I got really interested, the, the thing that really drew me into this is an interest in uh, the history of veg and forgotten edibles and endangered edibles and yeah. things. So I was really interested in what we were eating and mm-hmm. the kind of hybridisation and uh, F1 type thing. It's quite a recent development, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like... I, I want to grow a plant the way it has always been grown because mm-hmm. the way I look at it is... <clears throat> Yes, you can have a a hybrid that is a problem-solving plant and Mm -hmm. it's generally been, you know, bred to be super productive or Mm -hmm. more disease-resistant or whatever. Um, But if you are looking at heirlooms, they've been grown for much longer, like hundreds or even sometimes thousands of years, just because of the way they taste. Mm -hmm. And if you're growing for food and to feed yourself, I want something to taste as good as possible. Mm. So yeah, maybe there are slight compromises on productivity, but Mm -hmm. I would have said I've not really found any hybrids that stand up to heirlooms for flavour in my Mm. personal experience Mm, and I also don't find that they perform significantly differently so Mm -hmm. since I moved completely away from hybrids really good answer really interesting that's really interesting it's a good way it's a different way of looking at it because I'm Mm. I've always been about like the production of I want lots of them do you know what I mean Mm. maybe that compromises uh flavour but I have this year grown a couple of um heritage varieties one was puna kira which is a cucumber mm. and the skin is like rusty and and i've got that wrinkles it's lovely it looks like it's dead it tastes amazing <laughs> the flavor is really really good you know yeah. so yeah i can see where you're coming from now yeah Definitely. i do i do i think that for flavor they're better and also i just i also because i try to keep things as natural and organic and things as possible i prefer something that hasn't kind of been engineered Mm -hmm. to be something it's just if you plant the seed and you Mm. save the seed it, mm. you know what it's going to do and it, it remains true so hybrids don't um, always come true to seed do they you can't so save the seed F- from a F1, hybrid F1 you no, need no, to anyway. go back to the yeah. original cross yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. but yeah. I have got I break that rule <laughs> or the oats, like I said the only hybrids that I do grow are these um, ornamental sunflowers because like for example my favourite ornamental sunflower is black, called black magic and it's mm-hmm. like um, a black sunflower yeah. which is lovely um, so but I will save the seed from a hybrid sunflower um, and then let it scat- like I'll scatter it around because it the effect that you get mm-hmm. so you, it will go back to one of its parents or yeah, one of its ancestors. Yeah. You don't really know what you're going to get, so you end up with this big bed full of like different cool. yeah. sunflowers, all Definitely. different colours and cool, patterns yeah. and heights, and it's yeah. really nice. That's the only thing I would do it for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. it works really well for sunflowers. And also, if you're saving seed for microgreens in winter, which is one thing that I do, mm-hmm. um, it really doesn't matter mm-hmm. what it's going to do when it gets bigger. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's exciting. Do actually. you think there's a degree of the judgment around growing? 
hybrids then, would you say? It's kind of like the online community or do you think people don't really focus on that? I don't think so because I think in this country we're so conditioned to grow hybrids because Mm. um, from a commercial perspective and the big C companies, that really is the common way to do it. Yeah, Yeah, so Mm. I'd say the kind of... um, the interest in heirlooms and heritage varieties is, is kind of relatively new mm. and I think it's still quite young I think it's mm. relatively mm-hmm. niche and I still think there's this kind of um, novelty value to it so people are still a little bit caught up in that oh it's quirky because it's a different colour kind yeah, of thing yeah. whereas seeing that actually it was probably the, the colour that the plant was supposed to be originally mm. or the un- other benefits that it has it's not just about like k- kooky veg you know yeah mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of we're moving away from that now like people don't go oh wow look purple carrots that's yeah, yeah that's it's true. so crazy yeah. you know people yeah. now have a better understanding that actually you know mm-hmm. carrots aren't supposed to be orange they yeah. were totally bred to be orange mm. yeah. um so i th- i think yeah. it, uh, the understanding of them is growing and the appreciation of them is growing but um yeah i don't, I don't think we're completely there mm-hmm. yet just because the offer of what you can get is relatively small yeah yeah i get that um I, yeah. I gave a friend of mine some carrots that i harvested um from the allotment and then he posted a photograph of them all like laid out on the top and they were like the creamy white ones what are they called i can't remember anyway orange and purple and uh he was like, oh, thanks, Ellen, for these lovely carrots. And then he messaged me and said, oh, I'm really sorry. They weren't all carrots. These were parsnips. I was like, they're not parsnips. They are carrots. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> but people just don't know. Yeah. They're so conditioned into, yeah. like, we, we really are, like, generally. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're very conditioned to have the, yeah. the uh, the heirlooms and the heritage yeah. varieties. Yeah. 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 F1 varieties. And also, in terms of, like, Ellen says, the colour as well. Because I think... I think like in an English supermarket, the vegetable selection is quite like basic in a yeah, way. Yeah, so because, generic. Like, you'll know this as well, Ellen. In the US, you've kind of got rainbow carrots, yeah, you've got yeah, yellow no. beet, you've got all sorts. And it's, yeah. and it's so different and broad and like here is so limited. But you say it is changing. Yeah. And that's obviously due is, to yeah. a little bit online, social media. But do you think it's also something to do with chefs as well who are using slightly more unusual veg and different colours of veg now? Definitely. I think yeah. there's... Um, I think people are more and more um concerned with food Mm -hmm. like that's been a real focus for people um over the last few years you know you're vegan lots of people are turning vegan or vegetarian people are way more interested in their provenance uh, of what they are eating and the impact that it has on their bodies and the planet so and part of that is is led by chefs who are have this message of kind of seasonal ingredients and and you know growing stuff themselves yeah. and, mm-hmm. and you know it, I think it's that movement's kind of really come from the food industry and people's interest in food and there's probably you know e- everyone could get excited about food because we all have to eat probably more people can get into that than necessarily would say that they were into gardening mm. um yeah. so it's a good route into growing is an interest in food and I mm-hmm. think if you yeah. are interested in food and food provenance you want something that again something that feels natural and true a, mm. and yeah like the way it's always been grown mm. it's interesting isn't it yeah, so like it you is. obviously grow all this unusual unusual veg and you do tons with it like fermenting and drying and preserving and cooking mm. like how do you do it all Te- like what do you do with it all? <laughs> like, do you, you know, know once, new recipes or you like make once, your own? Oh, yeah, once you've so harvested <laughs> your veg, like, what happens next? Like, I always think that people forget to factor in that after you've grown it, you do actually need to do something with it and that can take up quite a lot of time it really can oh, and yeah. i think it's probably like it's like like slightly confession time here i think people think that i like because i grow all this food and i love growing it all i must be an amazing chef <laughs> i really don't actually like cooking that much <laughs> <laughs> i can cook but it's like i i like a lot of people i just don't have time yeah um, I, I, i'm usually out growing something or dealing with plants or or you know i've got work and, and things so I, I don't have a lot of time and I don't get that level of enjoyment, but I get to cheat somewhat in that I do have a chef in the house. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, uh, saying that he has obviously gone to Greenland for the entirety of the summer. So he's only, like, he's only semi-helpful, but in theory... <laughs> <laughs> 
but in theory, the rest of the year, hopefully. <laughs> but he he's back on Friday, so that'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> but he'll come back and he'll like whip up all sorts of amazing chutneys yeah. and jams and like right. other I think they're the perfect things. partnership because he's making all these cool different recipes and experimenting, yeah. and you're experimenting what you grow. Exactly, it's just, I provide some with amazing ingredients, and it is a perfect partnership. You need a TV show. I do. There you do go. You do. There Still you go. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, yeah. and, Lucy and Mike in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure people would be really bored. Oh, with I've nearly got it. Mr. and Mrs. Vegetable or something. Wow, that was really good. That's Mr. Really good. <laughs> wow. What could you call us? <laughs> <laughs> you work on that. But <laughs> um, I, 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 I think probably it's more interesting. Mr. People. and Mrs. Grow. There you go. Amazing. Have that for free. Wow. My mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I dare and say anything. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, I, I cheat, basically. So I have all this stuff and I will bring in, like if I've done a heavy day of harvesting, I'll have baskets and baskets. Heavy day of bar- harvesting? It's been a heavy day of harvesting. <laughs> That's har- what you should call your day. autobiography. <laughs> yeah, every every day, day of harvesting. It really is. It can be, though. Yeah. It genuinely can but be. Yes, and then I'll well, Ellen, you grow is bloody courgettes. <laughs> I've had like two courgettes <laughs> ones this year. They've been prolific. Uh, um, I was going to say earlier on when we were talking about um, the weather and what has been enjoying it, I've had chickpeas, soybeans. Mm. They have literally gone wild. Uh, quinoa. That it's just love the weather that we've had, and it's brilliant. Yeah, that's fantastic yeah. stuff to have for winter. Yeah, so I'm yeah. really big fan. Like, look, we we love growing beans in this country, but there's not. It's less common for people to grow beans for drying. But it's just the same yeah. bean. Yeah, like, yeah. So there's an amazing runner bean called Zar, which is brilliant. So you can you can pick them young and use them like a runner bean. But if you let them mature, and it's super productive, you get loads of beautiful pearly white beans wow. that dry really nicely. We use them all winter long. So oh. that I think that kind of crop is mm. something that more people should factor in into their summer yeah. growing. Yeah. Because it just keeps the good times rolling, and it's sure. so easy to preserve. Because once you dried them, you shove them in an airtight jar, and then they just sit there and wait until it's you're not, ready for them. It's not like yeah. all about harvesting and then just freezing it, because that's no. like the like the old thing yeah, to do yeah, is yeah. just get bags and bags and like freeze all of the winter. I have to say, I, that's pretty much me. I do <laughs> because I'm like, we if I freeze to. it, Mike can come back and cook me something delicious. You, <laughs> yeah, I get that. And um, you have a dehydrator because that was on when we came in. So what do you do with that? what do you use it for what do you put in it well so for example at the moment i've got three different types of chili in it so it's really easy to pick the chilies and put them straight in whole and then dry them right and then again just shove them in a jar so it's a really quick mm-hmm. easy way of preserving things take, like that do you know when it's done i just kind of prod it and when it stops okay. looking bendy i then think it's done <laughs> <laughs> i just don't know how it works there's, there's, a, there's a science to that yeah can you tell i'm an expert i didn't know if once they're dried they just catch fire i don't know how these things work <laughs> give me a prod to see if it looks crispier uh-huh. but I've also got so I made like um, a big batch of tomato passata obviously it had a lot of tomatoes in <laughs> so yeah. passata happened recently but then at the end so I, I pass it through like a food mill and then you end up with a load of kind of skins and seeds that have been filtered out so most people would bin that but I put that on a dehydrator tray and dehydrate it you can do it in the oven you don't have to have a mm-hmm. dehydrator but it's just easier yeah um and then once that goes really crispy stick it in a um a blender and powder it and then that is like a tomato powder that's basically like you can use it like tomato paste yeah that's cool oh, God, so, so try cool. and use everything despite <laughs> yeah. the fact i'm not like queen of the kitchen <laughs> but you've got but I just tomato find. queen i i, I do like yeah, a tomato yeah. i've um, like done tomato. that with microgreens last year so I grew tons and tons of microgreens. I dried them out and then I put them in the blender and then I've just got loads of microgreens dried. Oh, amazing. That you can just add dried into. Them. Yeah, you just then add them into. You can dry almost anything. Oh my God, my life has changed. How did you dry them? Just in the oven. So I was in America at the time. It was during lockdown. And I grew like all, you know, like radish, beetroot, whatever, mustard, whatever you can grow, some brassicas, and then put them into the oven in batches and then blended them up after they were dry. I actually have a video of them. That's really cool. uh, Of it somewhere. And then, yeah, um, yeah, and then put them into individual jars and then you can just use them or you can mix them up either way, Mm. chuck them into anything and you're getting like masses of nutrition just from like a teaspoon of uh, 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 microgreens because actually in that tiny teaspoon there's tons of mm. microgreens yeah it's know, a really really good and immediate way of preserving yeah. which I really really like oh Postman's yeah. here another seed catalogue oh. oh no oh. <laughs> we want to know what seed catalogue it is oh there's an actual knock at the door so Ellen and I will have to fill
fill in with general gossip. <laughs> what can we see in the room? Prickly I can see pear. snails. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and not, not just random snails. These are proper snails in a tank. Yeah, not just snails going up the side of yeah. the wall. <laughs> African guys, lands. This is real life in She Grows Vegeland. <laughs> <laughs> um, where were we? We were talking about... Ellen's dry microgreens. Yeah. I think I have to try that. That's genius. But it's a brilliant way of, um, yeah. of preserving stuff. And yeah. then there's so many different ways you can use it. But it's just really quick and immediate. And mm. then, like, I've done celery leaf for uh, using later on. Yeah. And, wow. Yeah, it's great. So I'm going to repost the video now. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. 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 Just for us. Yeah, just for you. <laughs> I did, um, not dry, but I did cook tomatoes in the oven once. Like, roast them, like, really low on, like, 100 for four hours. Mm. And then you've got a kind yeah. of, like, a sun-dried tomato-ish yeah. kind of thing that you could then put in jars with a bit of oil, I think it was. I don't yeah. know. But yeah. Oh my God, I could talk about these recipes for hours. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. But we do need to draw to a close soon, do we? Do we? Or can we talk about veg for a bit more? <laughs> well, I... Yeah, we right. do need to draw some. One <laughs> final question then. What is the one kind of fruit or vegetable that you think is super exotic but actually really easy to grow and you think more people should be ordering seed of it or plug plants this season? Can I go with a plant that I reckon yeah. everyone should have Very in their like, flower bed, to be honest? Yeah. Okay. It's like my favourite plant to grow. And like it, people don't seem to realise that you can grow it here, but it's actually a really beautiful foliage plant, like yeah. ornamentally. Well, and I then gives you amazing plants. So, I'm a, a rather big fan of the Japanese hardy ginger or zingiba okay. myoga. Oh, I thought you were going to say canna. No, no, oh, no. no. Well, they're, they're good too, but, yeah. like, uh, you know, people grow cannas. They yeah, might not yeah. realise that you can eat it, but, you know, you get, I, I think Japanese hardy ginger, ginger, ginger bleh, is amazing. You nearly said jizz. Uh-huh. I did. <laughs> I didn't, but you did. <laughs> yeah, and you'll be pleased out. Ah. See, we could have totally glossed over that one. But anyway. <laughs> She's in trouble at last. I've waited five series for this. <laughs> but it's amazing. So it's a ginger that you can grow in this country. And it's hardy. Is it hardy. Zingaba or a, a, not a hedicium? It, or? No, it's a, zin, it's a zingaba. Oh, okay. But you don't eat the rhizomes like uh-huh. you would with, you know, the, the tropical ginger that we get in the supermarket. So in the spring... When the first shoots come up, you can eat those. Like, you can right. with hostas mm-hmm. or asparagus. So you treat mm-hmm. them the same way once you've got an established clump. You take kind of, you know, a third yeah. or so off mm-hmm. off them and then leave, leave the rest to grow. And you've got, like, a really lovely gingery green. Like, oh, stir fry is amazing. Oh. But then, at the end of the season, so, like, late summer and into autumn, it flowers. But the flowers come out of the ground. They're kind of like an mm-hmm. orchidy, very strange okay, looking flower. Yeah. And you you got to look and kind of a, a like a foot around the plant. They could come up anywhere and out of the ground. Oh, yeah. And then you slice them off, and they are amazing. So that's a, like a, a delicacy in Japan. They go absolutely nuts oh, for them. Cool. But we can grow them here really easily. What's the Latin? So we zingaba. Zingaba myoga. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, you need so many garden. You'll oh. love it. And it's just a really lovely foliage plant all the way through the summer. And all you've got to do is give it a bit of water, and that's it. Oh my gosh, there is so much information really in this cool. episode for listeners, seriously. <laughs> I, I hope that everyone's been sitting there at home. Yeah, those the flowers are amazing. Look at those, Ellen. Yeah, funky. They're crazy, oh, but you want, to, you want to pick them before they do the, uh-huh. the flower bit. You want to pick the buds. Oh and God, we I had them get some. pickled, like yeah. raw, raw pickled um, with sushi, and they were amazing. That's cool. Oh my God. Can I ask you one more question? I want to ask you so much. She's in charge of that. Have you, um, <laughs> ever, you. Have you ever cooked hosta then? Yeah, they're so yeah. good. I I've actually, got loads of hostas, but I've never really thought, should. oh, well, I should cook Well, why should slugs have all the fun? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They love them so I much. Like that. Yeah. What did you do? Stir fry or what? How did you? How did we have them? I think we literally treated them like you would, like mm. really lovely asparagus. So just yeah. like blanched them and had them with butter and oh, like some cool. sort of dip or something and it was they're so good they're really asparagus yeah 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 um, but they don't have the unfortunate effect on your wee afterwards <laughs> which is quite <laughs> and I think they actually taste better yeah. so yeah I'm a big fan yeah. of the hosta and also so you've got some bamboo shoots in a jar are they English harvested yes bamboo? wow yeah. that's cool as well but yeah you have to do quite a lot of processing on bamboo shoots because they're quite toxic to begin uh-huh. with but you have so you have to boil them and, and pull away the, the water again uh-huh. and again and again and again until right. you get rid of the toxins. And what do they taste like then? Bamboo shoes. <laughs> they taste like <laughs> they bamboo. You've got to add flavour. To be honest, they don't you. have a huge amount of flavour themselves. I'd say they're more textural. Mm. It's okay. kind of like this crunchy, slightly rubbery texture. Right. But I wouldn't have said they had 
a, like a really strong yeah. flavour that you could pick out. But then, you, like you know, we've got them pickled in soy sauce and things. So you can there's lots of ways that you can use them. Yeah. Wow. As soon as anyone says that okay. it's toxic, but you have to go through a process to detoxify it, I'm out because. <laughs> First of all, I don't trust myself to do it right. Yeah, how do you know when it's done? And I would yeah. literally be nibbling at it going, oh my God, I'm going to die. Oh my God, I'm going to die. So I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> That's like when I had fugu in Japan, you know, the puffer fish. Yeah, yeah too much margin for error. I remember Googling I don't think it. it's that toxic. <laughs> I remember Googling like the number of hours after which you might die and I was like... Oh. Oh, I'm all right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that lived. I couldn't relax until after like six hours. But you hours still ate it. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> There's oh, an God. element of danger there that you clearly enjoyed. Anyway, yeah, thank you so oh, much. This is brilliant. It's thank been you. so no, interesting. Okay. Where can I'm pretty sure that everyone's following you anyway, but where can people find you You're online? One of the big guns. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Um, basically, she grows veg on everything. When, Anything and everything. Yeah, so you'll find me. And your website as well, she grows. Yeah, she grows veg dot com. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Basically, if you want me, that's where you'll oh, find me. Are you on TikTok? Me. No. Oh. oh, but also you're homesteading, <laughs> aren't you? You're moving and you're homesteading and everything. Yeah. So yeah. people can follow that journey, can't they? Yes, it's going to be quite a new like change of direction I guess so it's not a change of direction but a change of circumstances I guess because you're going from small garden very small, small holding, garden right? to small holding yeah, yeah. so it's um, it's going to be a massive project so we've got to build a whole homestead from scratch but I just I really want to see how self-sufficient we can be it is a little bit of a pipe dream self-sufficiency but I feel like I spend quite a lot of time telling people that you know the thing you know growing food and and these kind of decisions that we make have a big impact on the planet so if I'm going to preach it I feel that I should practice it Mm, and then if I basically try and do everything so we're going to try and go off grid and be as self-sufficient as we can from this point piece of land and preserve as much food as possible and just see what it is possible to do it's not like i think everyone's going to rush out mm. and buy like an acre of land and, and start a homestead yeah. yeah but there'll be things in there that anyone could pick and choose that yeah. would apply to their life yeah. and then and anything that you can do is like a step in the right direction and you're so, going to document it kind of yeah. in an honest way to show yeah, what so really can be done you can That's see really the point cool. where i'm like absolutely really cool. exhausted slightly in tears still coming <laughs> into my house <laughs> rain's coming fun. in <laughs> that kind of thing it's gonna be just fun it'll be fun it'll be an experience for sure Wow. Yeah, it's admirable. It's amazing. And also you have a book, don't you, as well? To I do. To yeah, so Get Up and Grows Out at the moment. Um, I'm from most major book retailers, I think. And, yeah, it, the idea was... Um, to show ways that anyone can grow food and it doesn't matter what space you've got because we don't all necessarily have a big garden or even a garden. Some people have, you know, only a balcony or they don't have any outside space. Um, So it presents a a number of ways that anyone could grow food. So if you've got a garden, there'll be new ideas for you to utilise space. Mm -hmm. But it just shows that you don't you don't have to have any outside space at all you can still bring food growing into your life as we can see here yes in every single <laughs> cranny <laughs> that's awesome it's really cool it's very inspirational it's definitely been a great chat thank you so much uh yeah so thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank you for having me it's been lovely watching you argue <laughs> <laughs> thank you bye-bye <laughs> I am a one-minute gardener, Teddy, and this is Gemma, a daily friend, and this is Daddy, a five-minute gardener. <laughs> that's right, that's everyone here. Now, last time we were talking, you were talking about your chickens. Yeah. Did you want to say what the chickens, what you do with the chickens? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we clean their poo and put make it into soil and make it into soil. You compost it down, do you? Yeah, then make it into yeah. soil. And did you grow anything with it this year? Yeah. Yeah? What did you grow? Um, I don't know. Did you grow flowers? Mm, they- to your mummy? Mm-hmm. Yeah? So you got to play with chickens. You got to get some eggs. You compost the poop and then you use that to grow your dahlias. Uh-huh. But what's happened with the weather this week? It's gone black. 
it's gone snowy snowy and what what are we worried about um are we worried about our dahlias yeah yeah because they might get too cold we didn't get to mulch them before did we hi but hopefully the soil warms up a little bit this week then we can mulch it some more yeah i'm finished now Thank you for joining us on the podcast today. This episode is sponsored by Three Spirit Drinks, the botanical trio of non-alcoholic drinks made entirely of plants. Visit the link in the podcast description to get 10% off your next plant-based spirit. I was already nervous when Zoom says recording in progress. Like, I feel like, oh, who's going to say the first thing? I know. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, anything I say now is like written down and will appear in court or something. <laughs> oh, let me tell you something really funny. We what? were driving, uh, we were driving back from somewhere the other day uh, and I put our last episode, which was the news and gossip episode, through the car because... Oh, yeah. Our editor sends it to us, doesn't he? And then yeah. we kind of skip through it to make sure we're happy with it and then we confirm it's okay before it's uploaded. And that's what I was doing. Anyway, you know the bit where we were talk in the news, we were talking about saving precious plants on the beaches in Tenerife. And I said, oh, I might have been there <laughs> as a teenager. Oh, my, my God. Like, Did you now? <laughs> that is cool. Oh, my God. So you got caught out for... What we hope is not infidelity, but just um, frivolousness. <laughs> no. But yeah, oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's really funny. Now, and he did laugh and he did find it quite amusing, but I was yeah. kind of, next time I will not be playing it in the car when we're driving, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, um, when it came through on the Saturday, when we then need to check off for the Sunday, yeah. I, I kind of heard this bit and I was surprised that it was still there. But then I was <laughs> like, oh, well. <laughs> 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 Thanks so much. You didn't think to say, Karen, do you think we should leave that bit in or not? <laughs> I think uh, that might be um, a test to see if we do listen to our Yeah, edits. probably. <laughs> Look, I don't, you know, life is life. And also, I was just talking about age before we started recording. Mm. And I do very much feel like now I'm getting a bit older. I'm not so bothered about what people think. I can't yeah. change the past. Things have happened, you know, especially when you're a teenager. Oh my gosh. And when you get older, it's kind of really good fun to think back to those days, you know. So oh, I'm not worried about whatever comes out of my mouth these days. <laughs> <laughs> or your ass. You could be happy to just be farting in a room or something. <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't do that, but you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but you, um, you, you were telling me earlier you've had a bit of an age epiphany over the last few days and apparently it's put stained the carpet (laughs) (laughs) i say you know what tell us about your epiphany and is it still leaking i is it still leaking the uh, (laughs) (laughs) i wouldn't call it an epiphany i would just say that over the last few days i've had a check-in on my age I suppose like inside Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still 25 or 30 maybe like a little bit of wiseness and married and whatnot but still really young um and I realized that my at my next birthday which is only a couple of months I'm going to be 44 and I was kind of like what is 44 is that (coughs) midlife is that like early 40s my next big birthday is going to be 50. I think midlife would be a round number more than 44 is it though what is if you're if if your average lifespan is 80 then midlife is 40. no but you're a vegan (laughs) (laughs) well you tell me it's better for life expectancy so you know i don't know about that but all i do know is it's meant to be much more healthy for your body anyway so i've had this like age thing the last few days and um i think can i put this out there yes because i'm nearly 44 so i can say what i want i think i've done pretty well age wise i don't think (sighs) i necessarily look 44 but there's little things that are changing and i've noticed so much more over the last few months yeah one is your makeup and i was saying to you that you 
in your 40s, you cannot wear the same makeup as in your 20s because it doesn't go on quite the same and it kind of gets a bit stuck uh-huh. in some of the lines. Yeah. And so I've had to change some makeup. Uh-huh. And then I was putting some lip liner on, which usually stops your lips stick from bleeding Mm -hmm. but even the lip liner was bleeding into the tiny little wrinkles that are coming around my lips uh, because I'm 44 yeah so it's kind of like like Sue Pollard (laughs) I'm gonna age so well I swear I'm gonna wear big glasses and have crazy hair and oh my god but do you think um I wonder if aging is more of an epiphany um when you're someone who has always felt quite young but if you're someone that kind of, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to explain this without offending 80% of people. Um, <laughs> but, I don't know. but some people, like, they grow up quite young, don't they? Maybe they've got extra responsibilities. They're perhaps not so focused on themselves the way that we would have been as people without children. We, yeah. we naturally are a bit more focused on ourselves. And I wonder if that is where ageing is more noticeable because you've been always more self-aware, so you actually see the change whereas if you have a lot of responsibilities and distractions you don't really notice maybe. what's happening until maybe. someone says oh you look old one day <laughs> yeah someone's just like oh you didn't age you aged quickly. yeah yeah no. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I guess we all go through our own thing when it comes to age. But over the last few days, I suppose I've just felt extraordinarily lucky to be getting to 44, actually. Yeah. I don't want to bring that down, but some people don't. And so those lines and wrinkles, each of them are a memory or, you know, laughter lines. You know, you've laughed a lot. <laughs> you kind of... Live just, life laugh. Yeah, you got to just get on with that, haven't you, really? You know, but anyway, <laughs> there you go. And uh, as for you... I I noticed that you did post actually on Instagram the other day your little grey patch in your beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I find annoying? Like, I like to have like a little grey patch is like, what? Just bloody give it to me, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Give me just some little patch. Give it to me full on, you know? <laughs> so most people who get a grey beard would love to dye it, but you want yours to be grey and not... Well, black. I want one or the other. I don't want patches. Okay. Well, you could use a bit of mascara on it if you wanted to hide it. No, no. Because I, I don't... Yeah, I don't want to modify it. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to having full on grey hair. Like, all, yeah. my, all the women in my family are very grey. So, really? yeah. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, there you go. Has age impacted your gardening style or what you think about plants and gardening, do you think? Sorry, I'm just looking at my beard line. Um, <laughs> has it impacted my gardening style? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's made me lazier? I don't know. <laughs> made me lazier? I'm not sure. That's a really good question, and it's a very cunning way of you bringing it back to horticulture, as you always Thank you. do, Ella Mary. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you've got like a frivolity radar. <laughs> I have like jazz hands at this moment. I feel very. <laughs> um, I don't know really. Hmm. No, because I think how you garden is more not linked to age necessarily, but linked to your circumstances at the time. So I would say like. Oh, maybe that is linked to age. But like when I was younger and I had more time and I would then be growing more things from seed, for example. But whereas, you know, if you had more time, you might be doing that, experimenting with more things. But whereas when your life's busier, you kind of, you know, just want to do things that do what they say on the tin, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a bloody good question, Ellen Mary. But actually, you said it. maybe it's made you lazier. And then I suddenly thought to myself, yeah, do you know what? I'm a bit more chill. Not lazier, yeah. a bit more chill with expectations. Like, people often expect, if you're a gardener or you love plants, for your garden to be amazingly beautiful and perfect, like mm-hmm. state gardens or something. But that's just not realistic. And Yeah, you know, and so I've, I've never described that. that. But I never subscribed to that with a garden or even with a house as well. Like, mm. I'm sure we've talked before about I'd like my house to look a little bit disheveled if someone came around. But I wouldn't want it to be pristine, like, you know, like Jake Cloth following someone around with Jake Cloth, you know, <laughs> like every five minutes. But yeah, I want something to look kind of lived in and that is more relaxing as well, you know? Yeah. I think when something's really kind of like tit- titivated and, you know, that's just quite sterile. I do and like it. it people don't relax. I like it tidy. 
Yeah. Uh, the other no, day, the kitchen was a massive mess. And I said to my husband, oh, the kitchen's such a mess. And he just hmm. said, yeah, but it's nice. It's lived in. It's comfortable. Yeah. No, I think there's a difference between tidy and clean, isn't there? You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You never had a tidy fridge, Ellen Mary. I still haven't. And do Is you know what's really... Thing? Do you know I blame my husband for that? I genuinely yeah. do because I keep tidying it and then in each drawer I put like salads in one drawer, veg in one drawer. Yeah, me too. Bread's on one and, and like all yeah. the condiments at the top and like it's all very neat and then after a day or two I'm in there and it's like, where, what? I can't, like everything's just all a mismatch. I know, I know. But does, we're going to, like this is um the best way to refer to our partners from now on, right? Yeah. Does your one <laughs> <laughs> Does your one just walk up to it and just like randomly just make a sandwich at any given moment? Yeah. And that is what leaves it disheveled. And they, there's no specific meal time. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just eating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whenever he fancies Same. sitting in the fridge and making something, he'll do that. And sometimes that's in a rush. So it might be between a work phone call. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. he pulls it all out, quickly puts something together, yeah. like smashes the bread together, and then yeah. off he goes. And all the stuff Le- is just everywhere. Leaves the knife on the counter as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> you have the same ones. <laughs> and then because there's no specifically kind of um, attributed meal time, then that, you know, my one might then have a sandwich at you know 4 45 and then yep. we eat dinner at five it's like well <laughs> my one is and, the same and we'll never hang on either well <laughs> i have to eat now <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes they sound very similar for sure oh dear um ellen i oh my god i was uh, off well no actually i i built this as being quite exciting but it's not really <laughs> um, <laughs> I just went somewhere yesterday and picked up some plants and the price of their house plants was illegal. Oh, really? Honestly. Um, have I shown you I'll show you a picture. I okay. sent the pictures to a Donna, you know, Donna mm-hmm. at Pretty Cactus. Yeah. And I suggested she goes down there, buys all the plants, and then sells them herself. <laughs> Look at that. How much do you think that was? Oh, hang on, where's the camera? Where's well, the camera it's not the there. That's uh, I think that that would be nine it's like 10 inches across. How big is 10 inches? I don't know. Ask Nine your pa- one. 9.99. No, six pounds. <laughs> it's amazing. You're supposed to be more amazed. But look okay. at that. Look at that one. This yeah. small leaf one. Yeah. That is again eight inches across. Right. Yeah. Six pounds. It's a it's steal. Amazing. Did you buy them all? You, you could buy a small one of those for six pounds. I was just. So excited! <laughs> Did you buy them? Uh, no, I only bought two, and I had that thing um, that you see on everyone's reels, and I never thought it would be me, but I was kind of like nervous to take them home <laughs> because I really don't need them, and there's really nowhere for them to go. <laughs> I know I'm struggling now as well. Like Isn't I, it just, weird? I want more <laughs> of all the plants I see everywhere, but I just like. <laughs> The space, and then also my husband obviously is here most of the year without me, and he doesn't always look after them exactly. Yeah. Well, that's natural culling, Ellen Mary. Natural culling, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's still upsetting when you come back, and there's a lot of. Oh my there. god! How's your point set? Did you buy a point set, yeah? Yeah. Oh, Michael, I really what? surprised myself. Why? So you I would. Wet yourself. Well, I, no, I'm not that old yet. I was aging. <laughs> that, yeah. No, I always tend to go for the different looking plant. Yeah, the one with pattern or barely ever traditional. And as you know, I do not like Christmas whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. So it says on I, your Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah, Ellen hates Christmas. I think that's yeah. going to be on my gravestone. So um, I went in and there's the red ones and the cream ones and then the little spotty ones, whatever they called. And then there was this beautiful pink, but with uh, cream edges. It was mm-hmm. so, so pretty. And I picked it <laughs> up and I walked along to the checkout and I got I love there. your impression of walking. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, here we go. I walked along all proud with my pink and cream poinsettia. And then I got to the checkout and I turned around and took it back and picked up a red one instead. I went traditional. Uh-huh. And I'm oh, surprised wow, nice. myself. 
But you know, I saw some, uh, I picked up some poinsettias for a piece of content yesterday, and there were some other ones there, and some on trial. And there's, um, oh, I can't remember the name, maybe fire something, but there's a relatively new variety, which is almost a bit more orangey red, because sometimes with that traditional red, it's just a bit too red for me. It's kind of, um, I don't know. Yeah. And this orangey red was a little bit more kind of fresh and invigorating. Do you That's know what I mean? Nice. I really... Is it kind of rusty or bright orange? Not so bright. Okay. Um, oh, God. Maybe the colour of, I don't know. I don't know colours. <laughs> but it's beautiful. And have you seen the variety Mouse? No. Look at that. It's got round... Oh, yeah. uh, it's got kind yeah. of like the round leaves, the round Isn't that wrap. cool? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and this is a little yeah. dinky one. I've also got some Sky Star as well. That's very sweet. But you know How what? How are they in the UK? How much is it for poinsettia in oh, the UK? I don't UK? know well and I don't pay for them. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm that level of celeb. I don't pay for plants. I can't believe <laughs> I'm even talking to you. Next time we meet, I will be requiring your autograph. Uh, Just no, to prove um, that we've I'm, been I'm, friends. Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure because these are like to create some content with. So I just got, I've got a whole tray. And of course, I never think ahead. Of the, well, no, that, not that I need to think ahead because you need them for the footage to do this. But then I will have a hundred points said to you with nowhere to go. <laughs> so I have to find homes for them. Hello. But yes. I've actually found, um, because I had a uh, 24 cactus and succulents of our home. But I found that my gym, I could take them to the gym. And that's a way of making friends with people. <laughs> that's so cute. i got to that just is. say, I have tried this twice before, right? In my old apartment, I took tons and tons of cuttings. and then oh, I, I remember put... seeing your little boxes outside. Yeah, I had nowhere for them to go. So I basically put a big yeah. sheet of paper outside our door and put all <clears> the cuttings out with arrows saying what each of them were. And everyone came along and took them, which is so cute. That's cool. <laughs> so oh, you're like a little plant shop and at the gym um, mm -hmm. this lovely guy this is at Phoenix Gym in Norwich this lovely lovely guy gave me some chrysanthemums to grow and they're still growing on my allotment now well uh -huh. I mean they may or may you not know. be growing right now uh -huh. yeah uh, that's cool but um, yeah so I have these poinsettias to uh, find homes for as well but yeah it's cool but oh my god yeah the biggest drama I forgot to tell you um we're doing our Christmas plants on Steph's pet lunch, but we are not doing poinsettias. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Your audience will be so miffed at that. I couldn't talk them round, honestly. <laughs> because there's so many different colours and cool ones, but we, we're going to step further and we're showing what else is available. So I think kind of, I've got some lovely, um, i got more to get, but like lovely frilly cyclamen. Because yeah. cyclamen are often overlooked, yeah. but the nice frilly ones, quite different, unusual. Um, what else? Hellebores as an indoor plant. Yeah. Got Christmas a lovely day. one in a wooden plant, and that's pretty cool. Azaleas, all the different shapes. Got some of the pyramid ones. Right. Yeah, so I think it is nice to kind of show a lot of alternates too. Yeah. You know, your traditional Christmas choices. That's really cute. Mm. I've actually got a talk for a company uh Tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow, um, about looking after different types of Christmas plants. Oh, that's so cool. I did one last year for somewhere, actually. Yeah. Because people often wonder, don't they, once they've got their Christmas plants, what to do with them, what to do with them after Christmas. Yeah, no, I think that's really, really cool. Definitely. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. How's your book? Are you allowed to tell me? I've done it. I'm done now. I've, I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> I've moved on already. But how's your edit? Well, I mean, I'm... I'm on the last of the copy edits. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah. What about yours? Cool. Yeah, there was some... It's so... Like, this sort of thing always worries me. You know, like, data and stuff. Like, because I don't always... I know it sounds square, but I don't always trust computers. <laughs> and so um, I just had um, an email earlier. It was like, a lot of the stuff that I'd been saying hadn't been changed on batch one or was missing from batch one was not on the version that they'd been provided. So I don't know, there's been some kind of glitch with like the batch one stuff, but I can see with batch two, there, there's no problem at all. And there isn't anywhere that I'm screaming 
on the Word document being like, where's this bit gone? Right. <laughs> so yeah, so right. I think we've got over it, but it's, oh my God, just handling data and stuff, is just like a nightmare, isn't it? And the worry of it. I know. Like, oh, it's just... The copy, edits, to... the copy edits always confuse me because they come back in batches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like yeah. you go through one batch and send it back and then another and then another. And I always worry that something's been missed or mm. you know, yeah 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 totally even you like then, you've got to open them on each screen and then compare and it's even when you've got the tracking you still want to then compare yeah so then i don't know it's oh my god it's a mind blow <laughs> yeah but you will you be done by christmas oh, with the checks i guess so yeah oh, i've got to cool. do um the bits i've got to do now are the kind of more simple bits like the intros and stuff yeah. But that almost makes you a bit nervous because that's some like to write about like plants is quite easy because that's they're kind of the facts. But this bit with the intros is about how I feel and kind of more, you know, yeah. it's the more personal bit, which is kind of hard because you feel differently at different times, don't you? You know, so yeah. You can say how you feel. You can say why you mm. love plants and why you've written this book specifically, you know, it depends yeah, on yeah. how you want to go. Did you have thank yous in yours? I had a few thank yous. My thank yous were to like the designer Me. and the copy editors, Me. my agent. Me. Uh, no, Me. and my husband. What? That's wet. How did he help you? For being there when you're moaning, probably. Yeah, but putting <laughs> up with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna in my book. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna thank your husband as well. <laughs> I'm not telling you what for. <laughs> oh, ding dong, Ellen. Oh, oh my God, though, it just like putting this book together. Just it keeps me proper stimulated about plants, though. Oh my God, just and you're just learning new stuff all the time. Oh my God, and some of the cool stuff that you can actually grow in our climate as well, that I hadn't even... Like, we all know, like, the obedient plant, the physicidia, where you can move the flowers into place. We know, even though I don't know if I've ever seen one, but you know Dictamnus, the one that's got the flammable substances on them? Yeah. I'm going to try and buy one, actually. But then there's another one I've been looking at called Stylidium. Have you heard of this? No. It's known as the trigger plant, and this is native to Australia. There's lots of different species there. Right. And it actually, it's got this, like, it looks a bit like a uh, rose bay willow herb, epilobium, that sort of tall kind of spike of flowers. But then the, oh, I always get the names of the bits wrong. <laughs> There's a trigger, basically, with the male and the female parts of the flower. And it actually sits back, reflexed. And then when a bee or insect comes in to pollinate, it flaps back and covers their ass with pollen. How cool oh, is that? What? It just goes like that. And then they've got pollen on their ass, and then they fly away and obviously douse that onto another plant. What? With their That's ass. insane. Isn't that cool? Oh my God. That's amazing. Like they've evolved oh. to be able to do this. It's incredible. Um, it's just, and things like, um, have you ever met a squirting cucumber? <laughs> When you were on the beach that time. <laughs> no, I've never met a squirt and cucumber before. Um, Ecbalium elitarium. And um, I remember this was being promoted as a kind of easy seed you could grow about 10 years ago. Um, but I'd never seen one at that point. But they grow wild at the side of the road in Greece. And you can test it out. And it literally, if, when you look at the videos online, you, you probably get in trouble for having that on your internet. <laughs> but basically... Don't ever look up squirting cucumber. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand it scientifically at all, but basically the whole pod kind of explodes away from the stem and as it goes, it spits out all the seeds and it happens so quickly. And I was on this Greek uh, roadside, like touching the bottoms of these squirting cucumbers to like release them. And obviously when they're fully ripe that is when they're going to go and so when they're turning like ye yellow almost to brownish and you touch it and it then goes and explodes and literally if your finger is there it is the pain of an elastic band is that quick the reflex action wow. honestly it was like having an elastic band pinged on my fingers that's when amazing I was releasing these 
Yeah. Oh my God, Ella Mary, so exciting. Oh and you my can't God, I love fail plants. to be excited by plants, you know. I think I when we do go- when we- a gardening is amazing, whatever you do, but you can still you can go through the same routines, can't you? You know, you do your mm. spring routine, your summer routine, your autumn routine, and you grow the same kind of things. But if you just sort of look a bit wider, do a bit of research, like just reading about plants and yeah. growing something just new, get excited. it's yeah. so exciting. That's really really cool. Defo, I'm like. Ah. I haven't told you yet, online or offline, have I? Well, I don't know. No, I think I started to tell you last week, but we've always got so much stuff that we're, like, <laughs> tumbling out of our mouths to each other, honestly. <laughs> but you know, um, you know Duda at Kiln, Josh? Yes. He's going to start coming and doing some cool projects with me. What's he going to... That's amazing! What are you going to be know. doing? Huh? What are you going to be doing? Well, kind of like garden stuff. So like with garden maintenance, things like that, because it's really useful for his college course because they don't have um, like a garden at Kiln where they can do that kind of garden work. Right. So starting with that, but then I've got all sorts of like cool tests and projects and ones where oh, I, don't, I can't tell you too much, but just like testing a lot of the things that we would assume in day-to-day life is how it needs to be. You know, but what happens if, um, I, I'm thinking off the top of my head now, but what happens if you don't side shoot a tomato? What's really going to happen? You know, is the sky going to fall in? Is it going to change the flavour of the fruit? This or that? Bulb, the one that we will get working soon soon enough is bulb sizes. I, I know we're a little bit late, but like bulb sizes, everybody says size matters. But really, let's see what happens if we plant a 10-12 against a 16-18 yeah. or 18 plus. Yeah. And it might it might well make a difference, but I just want to kind of see that. And also, yeah, just make a few kind of cool videos aside it. And and even um like as we get towards the summer, I've actually got a couple here now, but like taking cuttings of sunflowers. You know, what plants, what annuals could we take cuttings of like early in the season and get more from? Because you know they do it with tomatoes quite often, don't they? Yeah. But I'm wondering, like, you know, sunflower, that kind of worked. And I know at Thomas Morgan a few years ago. We were looking at taking cuttings of like certain sweet peas as well. Right. So I don't know, just kind of playing around with a lot of things and like challenging the, the what's it, the kind that's of horticultural. Really, that's yeah. so cool. Like that's really exciting for you. I can see you're like super smiley right now, but how cool. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, it's sort of a bit like you're going to be mentoring him as well. And like that's I guess just so, really yeah. awesome. Yeah, it just kind of like crossed over. And I think he, he just impressed us so much with his. Yeah. Um, I don't know if confidence is the right word, but kind of just, uh, just proactive. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so obviously he asked to come on the podcast. He came on the podcast. He's really willing to learn, excited about stuff. So, yeah. So we're going to start working on a few cool things, which is very exciting. So, That's really yeah. cool. I'm looking forward to seeing it all kind <laughs> of come together. A show. Ding dong, hey? Ding dong. What else is on my Tell Ellen About list? Da, da, da. Oh, do I need to remind you that I won. For just for yeah, me. I, I'm reminding you that I won an award last week. You might want to say a few words on that. Well, I, usually it's the person who <laughs> won the award that says the words, but um, it's really funny actually because obviously we were watching the Garden Media Guild Awards last Friday and we'd recorded our gossip, hadn't we, for last week's podcast. Oh, yeah, it was really out of date, wasn't it? Oh, it was in the news, yeah, and you just, you know, you'd mentioned the awards and that you were in... Yeah. I was wondering about adding something at the end, but I thought that would be a bit, a bit too much up my own bum. Uh, it would be, wouldn't it, right? <laughs> and we oh, wouldn't want anyone to think you were like that. So, <laughs> when, um, so yeah, it was really funny because when uh, they started to read out the winner, I knew it was you immediately. Like, literally from the first thing they said, I was just like, he's won. He's really? Really- yeah, and, and then every single thing they mentioned, I was like, well, that's Michael, that's that, you know, because I knew what you'd done, and then, uh, and you won, and you looked so cute when you were, when but, you won. You had little, like, rosy cheeks, and you were so cute. But do you know what, <laughs> do you know what, Ellen, though? Because you were messaging me, and at that point, it's like, you're stuck, and you think that you're hearing what you're hearing, but you're <laughs> you're not sure. And I was kind of like, and um, and I almost said at that point, um, oh no, afterwards when I kind of when it was there, and it even came on screen. But then my one, Rafael, came downstairs and like was then, and I was all excited, and I was like, 
I, I, I won. And then I was like, oh, but let me just message Ellen and double check. <laughs> Bearing in mind that it's just been on the screen. I literally just like, didn't and, said it. <laughs> I was in such disbelief. It was so strange. <laughs> <laughs> because like I don't know it's just you should, be used, and... you should be used to winning awards last year you won social media no. as well you should <laughs> be getting like totally used oh, to it but the the hat trick the only hat trick I want is them podcast this time Next yeah, time. that would be really amazing, mm. wouldn't it? But I think you can go even further than that because I think one day you're going to hold the glitter ball at Strictly Come Dancing. No, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, I wouldn't even do a reel where it's rhyme. What do you call it? Rhyming, miming. <laughs> miming. <laughs> rhyming. Oh. And rhyming. Very good. But anyway, no, congratulations. Cool, Congratulations. It is uh, totally well-deserved because the stuff you do on Steph's Pack Lunch is cool because it is slightly different to what you see on other channels. Yeah. People do. Yeah, true. It's really, it is really cool and it is well deserved. And I'm not just saying that because it's you. No, no, it's cool. you know? <laughs> uh, so yeah, congratulations to you. Yeah, when you're in it, you perhaps don't realise like how different and cool it is. So yeah, yeah you're just doing cool. your thing. But yeah, well yeah. Done. Anyway, yeah. oh, oh, I ding can't dong. stop playing with my hair today for some reason. I know. <laughs> um, so we need to sign off this gossip because yeah. we have got a lot of things to <clears throat> talk about. Oh, this is our AGM. Yeah. Did you like my suit? <laughs> <laughs> I took it off now. I only did it for the picture, but I had a suit. I had a shirt and tie on, and I was like, <laughs> "Put this our plant-based podcast AGM." <laughs> yeah. Like, Ellen, got, do you want to rejoin the committee next season? Uh, yeah, ha- can, Jackie can, Weaver. Hands up. can everyone vote with their hands up? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I had to say something before we go, actually, okay. because we need to um, add a clarification to. No, no <laughs> you're, looking, you're looking really worried, like we printed something wrong in the newspaper. But, I it was no, because our episode this week is with She Grows Veg, Lucy. Yeah. And in the episode, we talk a lot about the unusual veg she's grown, this and that. And we also, we're doing the interview in her house, which is being manically packed up for her to move into the countryside, into this homestead. And of course, it's worth pointing out to listeners that she now is living at, well, not living at, I think she's living at her mum's, but she's now moving into the homestead and kind of getting everything prepared. And yeah, and so she's kind of knee deep in, I don't know what, scrap metal, um, sheds in a shade of pistachio, stuff like that. So, yeah, so that's obviously a little bit different because we interviewed her, I think, back in July, wasn't it? So, yeah. Was it? No way. It was later uh, than July. Sure. Yeah, it, it was, was summer, and anything season. in summer is July for me. It was the end of the season. She was then starting to was get packed. So, it was okay. much later than July. Well, we interviewed her previously. And, um,. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, no, it's worth pointing that out. And if you obviously look on her Instagram now, you will find that she is at the homestead and having a wonderful time. Yeah, and she it's can... coming along so fast. It's amazing. I know. It's really cool. I bet you can tell she's a really organised little hedgehog, isn't she? <laughs> Don't you think? I, I, I would be scared <laughs> to be organised by Lucy. <laughs> yeah, I bet she's an Excel queen. She's a pivot table <laughs> <laughs> the table enthusiast <laughs> but what I'm most jealous of and I don't know if this was real or this was Instagram made up but um, <laughs> they were invited around to meet their neighbours with cake that's cute but you've that's had so cake cute from... and idyllic I want you've had, that you've had cake from your neighbours oh I did yeah but never invited me round <laughs> but it felt it's, uh, it was really sweet honestly oh my god I was well jealous <laughs> that's very cute ding well, to the dong so she is awesome go follow her she grows veg so yeah I hope everyone enjoyed the episode oh, uh, oh I love when I um, get an email from my mum for like Tesco delivery and it was like hi Margaret <laughs> I'm like oh my god what? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to yeah. call you Margaret now instead of Michael Nah, all, right, Margaret. Uh, all right, anyway, going back <coughs> real. Lovely chatting. Right. We've got to chat more. <laughs> the music for the Pump Ace podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James, and our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. Mm-hmm.